In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about capacitor testers. Now, the capacitor tester I have here on the right is the made by Electronic Design Specialist. It's the Cap Analyzer 88A. I've also got a, a B and K uh, capacitor tester, although it's not an ESR type, and there's a big difference, and I'll explain a little bit about that here. Um, first of all, I want to say that the particular model I have uh, the range is limited from we're looking at 0 0.1 ohms resistance on the top to 20 ohms on the bottom here and basically the way it works is a capacitor should have very low resistance based on its capacity value for example if I put this one here if I take my test leads and put it across the capacitor you can see on my bar graph it tells me if it's good or not in this case I'm testing a 1000 microfarad capacitor so we look at the the scale here where it says 1000 volts and it shows me that if anything appears in the red here as far as that bar graph indicator goes that it's a bad capacitor and it's supposed to be up in the green now sometimes you'll be checking a capacitor you'll get a marginal reading meaning it's not exactly working as it should but it might be acceptable and that's something you want to keep in mind if you're using this particular type of meter or one like it. Uh, you don't always have to replace capacitor just because you're getting a marginal reading. In fact, a lot of times I've had TVs come in here, extremely old TVs, and there'll be a lot of caps that'll show up in the marginal range, and I can't always go and replace every one. Now, I will replace the capacitor if I know, for example, that it's in a circuit that's known to fail quite a bit because the capacitor goes bad, like working on a vertical circuit. I always replace the caps in a vertical circuit any time I replace a vertical IC. So, yeah, keep that in mind. You don't have to be overly critical as far as, uh, you know, replacing every cap just because it doesn't show up as perfect. If you're new to electronics, I'm sure it's common for people that are new to electronics to make that mistake. The other thing, a lot of times I know people will look at the tops of capacitors and they'll determine whether it's bad or not based on the fact that it's swollen or it isn't swollen. Well, believe it or not, I've seen bad caps that are completely flat on the top and uh, you'll never know it looking at them and I've seen some caps that have a little bit of a swell on the top and they're still working so you can't always go by appearance the other thing I was going to warn some of you guys about is every once in a while I get a capacitor that's got what appears to be a swollen top but it's not always the capacitor itself that's swollen sometimes just this plastic piece swells up and so I'll take a something with a pointy tip on it and I'll pull that plastic right off the top there and see if it's swollen underneath because uh, Oh, well, some of these caps can be expensive. I don't want to replace them unless I have to. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Um, just because a capacitor looks swollen on top, it make sure it's not uh, just the plastic. Because sometimes these things put out a little gas and they might cause the plastic to swell. Uh, another thing I like to mention is sometimes I, I get a capacitor. It might check good on my meter. It doesn't necessarily mean it is. It's rare, but most of the time... Uh, you know, my, my meter's been fairly accurate, or every once in a while a capacitor will come along that tricks it. This particular one here, in fact, um, it I remember when I first checked it, it actually showed up as good, and yet it's it's got a problem. Although, now it is showing up as, as having a problem, so I don't understand that. But, yeah, keep in mind, if you ever have any doubts, or let's just, let's just say that you've got a capacitor, you're wondering, you know, gee, what the reading I'm getting, is it good or is it bad? Well, one way you can know is go, go grab a known good one out of your supply of capacitors and compare the two. See what a new capacitor looks like versus an old one and go from there. Uh, the other thing is sometimes if, um, if I have any doubts at all, you know what I'll do? I'll take the capacitor and I'll just charge it up on my variable power supply. Now this particular one here, it, it's a 25 volt capacitor, so I'll, t I'll take my variable power supply and I'll charge it up to 25 volts. And I'll see how long it'll hold the charge. Uh, and I'll put, for example, I might put a resistor across it and see how quickly it discharges. And I might compare it to a known good one. So if I ever have any doubts, I'll always uh, do a little comparison like that. The other thing you want to keep in mind about a capacitor is it's not really supposed to conduct electricity once it's charged. And let me see if I can give you a little demonstration of what I mean here. I've got my digital volt ohm meter on the resistance scale. And you notice if you take your, your uh, capacitor and you hold the, the leads to the probes on your meter. Well, let me go to a different scale here. 
I'm going to go to the 2 meg scale. Okay, I must have charged this already. Let me see. Switch the leads around. There we go. Now you'll notice when you're, when you're checking a capacitor using your ohmmeter, um, if it's working correctly, you should see your digits on your meter continuously change as it's charging. But there's going to kind of come a point where this capacitor becomes fully charged and you're not going to see the numbers flipping around anymore. And let me see, I'm going to go to a lower scale because this is taking too long to charge up here. There we go. Uh, you can see, oops, you can see it charging up slowly there and there'll, there'll come a point where you won't get a reading anymore and that's normal for a capacitor. Now there's another type of capacitor checker it basically tells you the value of the capacitor, and I haven't found them to be very accurate as far as telling me if the capacitor is good or not all the time, but you can take your capacitor leads, and in this case, I want to make sure it's discharged first. don't want to damage my meter. You discharge it, and you, in this case, you plug it in the little hole here. It'll show you the value of the capacitor. Although in this case, let's see, uh, this, this meter doesn't even cover this scale, so it's not going to tell me anything. But... Um, let me see, there was some other point I wanted to add to this video. Um, oh, yeah, well, one thing, don't be overcritical in replacing caps. You don't need to. You will sometimes see some capacitors that are marginal. And again, I, I look at where the capacitor is, and I have to use my own judgment as to whether I need to replace it or not. You know, if it's in a power supply circuit, and it's a heavy-duty cap, and it's supposed to be, a, you know, maybe a 1,000 microfarad capacitor, and it's showing up as a as a you know, 500 microfarad capacitor, definitely I'd replace something big like this. But the small ones, I don't always change everything uh, just because it's marginal. Now, the other thing you want to keep in mind, uh, sometimes you'll be checking capacitors in circuit. And while this capacitor is known to be able to check a lot of caps while they're in circuit, not in all cases. Every once in a while, you'll get one that's in parallel with another cap. So when two are hooked together, you're not going to get an accurate reading uh, by checking... Uh, checking a cap in circuit. In some cases you do have to pull them out. And the other thing I was going to say, a lot of times if, you, if you're changing a cap, uh, you want to keep in mind that, you know, some of these boards they come out of might be four-sided boards, believe it or not. And in real difficult situations, you know what I'll do? I'll snip the cap off. I'll snip it right in half. And I'll just solder right onto the leads that are there. Oh, I know another point I was going to add about this particular meter here. Now, this meter I've got, uh, it's it's got a an ohmmeter built into it. So, for example, if there's a short circuit in a capacitor, it'll show up. Um, so you get a special reading here. When I, right now I'm shorting my probes together. Now, sometimes you want to set the resistance to be triggered at a certain level to see if there's a short. For example, I think they recommend you keep it on about 50 ohms. Uh, the other thing about this particular meter, one of the things it does before it checks a cap, it'll automatically discharge it for you. So, for example, if I hook it on my capacitor meter here, and I touch my probes across here, you'll see there's a little bit of delay before it gives you a reading, and that's because it wants to make sure it's fully discharged before it's, it tests it. Now, you can bypass the discharge function simply by holding these two probes together, pushing your power button down and letting it turn on with the probes together. Now now the discharge function has been disabled and it'll check ca caps quicker, although I don't know if I'd recommend turning that off because sometimes you'll want to have, you want to make sure that discharge function is on unless you're testing hundreds of caps and you want, want it to go a little quicker and you know, you know for sure none of them are charged. Let me see, there's, you know, making a video is kind of challenging because there's always something I think about later that I might have said. Um, oh, sometimes the real um, low-value capacitors, like one microfarad, they don't always show up on my on my meter. And even though it goes down to 0.47 microfarad, um, well, I guess if it's new, it should show up. But I, I know when they're old, sometimes they don't show up. And again, I'm not always convinced that I have to replace every one that uh, doesn't show up on my meter. So let's see, uh, when we're placing caps, of course, make sure you go with high temperature caps if it calls for high temperature caps. And and again, uh, a capacitor should never, enter, enter, under any circumstance, test like a resistor. You know, when you take a conventional volt ohm meter on the ohm scale and hold it across there, 
on on the ohm scale, it should the the uh, digits should flip around a little bit as the thing is charging. Oh, I'm not on the ohm scale again. Anyway, I hope I said enough here. I wrote some of these things I want to say on a piece of paper. So um, hey, uh, thanks for listening. I hope you found some of this info helpful.